Oh, City Dark Secrets, you know what it is, man. Check this out, news. Check this out, Tuesday goes down. Got the homie from the left coast, the west coast. He calls it the greatest, man. The homie Mike Johns is on the line. What up, Mike? Hey, how's it going there, good brother? How's everything? Everything is good, man. Now, Mike Johns gives us the latest and greatest on everything uh, in the tech game, apps, games, and anything tech-related. So, Mike, I saw something come across our desk, and I couldn't wait to speak to you on this. Technology impacting the desire for sex. I thought it's going to enhance it. Ted? Barbara? Something's missing. Missing? In the bedroom? In the where? Trojan man. You know, I'll start off with this. Are you constantly on your smartphone, emailing, checking sports scores, or just surfing the Internet? These days, it's almost crazy that with a swipe of your phone, singles can now get the next hookup thanks to an app. Maybe that's Tinder. Ooh. Meanwhile, committed couples, they're not having a good day. And according to recent studies published, researchers have found that people born in the 90s were twice as likely to abstain from sex in the first few years of adulthood and approximately 15% of 20 to 24-year-olds have not had sex. I mean, there's a lot of young people out there who have not uh, dipped in. To say the least, definitely living <laughs> that pure life. Um, living that pure life. And, and I, would, I would comment even further to say that for committed couples, as I mentioned earlier, technology has been almost viewed as a distraction. How many times have you gone out to a date, dinner, movies, you name it, and the couples are stuck on their phones? In fact... The communication is done via their phone. Researchers are finding it's kind of like having an impact in terms of relationship, the humanization of relationship, and how that actually uh, transfers over into the bedroom. Let's switch gears for a minute. Now, you know, this is a term that I've heard you using, and I'm like, what the hell is that? Because it sounds like there's some money involved, and I think there is, but the Internet is going to net neutrality. Translate that for us. Yeah, so let me let me start with this. It's the background. It's your service providers versus the streaming services like Netflix, Spotify, Hulu, which are basically at war right now because it's changing up their business model. Internet service providers are feeling like, hey, for our technology, we should also be getting some of that money back as it relates to streaming services. So if you look at Netflix, they're basically saying if you have Internet, here's what you pay. And this will allow you into our subscription service. Now, Internet service providers are saying, hold up. In order for your technology to even work, you need our platform, and we need to get in on that money bag. And that's what we have going on right now. If you really think about it, net net neutrality is the principle that all Internet traffic should be treated the same by your Internet provider whether it's email, online games, or stream, streaming music. And right now, with the Trent administration trying to basically uh, get rid of everything that uh, President Obama has done, they're now saying, hey, you know what, we're moving in favor of the AT&T, Comcast, and Verizon, and all the other service providers to say that maybe there should be a fee in terms of the streaming access as compared to the current model. So we're, we're seeing some disruption in the game, the Internet, is changing and you should be in tune be aware so you think that president trump is going to have to get involved in this well he's he's very much involved in it it's all about money the money bag is ringing right now and so uh you know for companies the internet service providers that are allowing the likes of a netflix to even exist off of their technology i mean to some degree there is a point I, i'm gonna you know i can look at it from both sides to say hey as a service provider, yeah, you do have a point. If I had a business that was ran online and all it required was Internet access and you can now make transactions and do purchases, but the providing technology doesn't get anything of this, of this well, yeah, I think 
there is ground for that. How much will it disrupt the business of the likes of Netflix, Spotify, Hulu? That remains to be seen. And then the customers will feel the burden. Wow. Big bank. Big bank. Hank. Uh, yes. So now, speaking of big bank, we're talking about music streaming. With the emergence of Jay-Z's latest album, 444, he's completely killed the Internet, and he's been making a lot of money, to say the least. And Tidal has come back to the forefront. What is going on with music streaming in 2017 now? That's a very good question. Well, right now, I could just say that, point blank, music streaming is dominating. If there's 300-plus million people in America, I'll let you know that in uh, the first six months, of 2017, over 284 people have streamed music. This according to the l latest uh, Nielsen reporting. That means more than 60% of all music consumption this year is done via streaming. So yeah, music streaming is here. It now dominates, and that's the business. Hold on, Companies Mike. have to prepare themselves. You yep. said 284, but you, you smoothly said it. 284 yeah. what? Million people. Oh, actually, I'm, let me correct that. 284 billion on-demand streams in the next six months. Yeah, Billy wants to be acknowledged. Billy definitely yeah. wants to be acknowledged. It's 284 billion point. people or billion on-demand streams? Wow. Yep, okay. on-demand streams in the, in the past six months. I'm sorry, in the past six months. So that's a very important note. 284 billion on-demand streams in the past six months for uh, 2017. Amazing. This according to Nielsen. So, yeah, the, the streaming business, it's here to stay. So, interestingly enough, as we talk about streaming, you know, we need to talk about hip-hop, which is once again at the very top of the musical hierarchy right now. It's a very good day for hip-hop, and it's funny that the media hasn't really talked about this. I wonder why. But uh, Big Data has it right now that hip-hop has dethroned rock and roll as the most listened to music in America. Uh, Big Data was used with Forbes in reporting the R&B and hip-hop top charts. And now they've actually went ahead and reported that 25.1% of all music consumption in the U.S. Uh, is hip-hop, while 23% of that is actually rock and roll. Um, so it's interesting to see that hip-hop is now the new voice of today's generation. Oh. Man, very amazing. Um, on another note, man, this is kind of crazy to me. Uh, let's talk about the online recruitment of street gangs. What's up man. with that? What's going on there, bro? Yeah. Internet, you know, the internet banging, let's just call this and tech-savvy street gangs. I would like to say that uh, parents and law enforcement have a new problem on hand. A uh, new report just recently was released in which uh, the police now really is fully aware that gang members are using social media to lure members uh, or basically to recruit members. Gangsters will show off money, weapons, and the lifestyle in social media posting. And what's really interesting is that uh, in some degree, you could look at gangs, be it blood, cribs, vice lord, disciple, you name it. They're basically promoting their brand, boosting their brand to recruit members. And there's almost a flip to this as in this is what companies could use to get people to buy their products. And so right now in the latest statistics in Arizona, uh, one in five eighth graders are alert into gangs and thought that it would be cool to belong to a gang. This is uh, part of a 2016 Arizona youth survey that uh, basically surveyed over 57 students nation, uh, statewide. And so gang members are increasingly using messaging platforms such as Snapchat as well as WhatsApp to communicate to each other. Cities like Chicago to New York, African Americans and Latinos are really heavily on Facebook, Facebook Live and YouTube, and chat rooms to broadcast gang affiliation brag about a recent fight, a murder that was committed, sadly enough, as well as telling their brand. That's, that's the bigger thing. How gangs are using social media to promote their brand, there's a lesson to be learned as to how companies can take a page from a gang and to promote their own brand. Straight up! 40 Glock, what it do, bro? What up with it, man? I can't call it. Everything is everything. So... 
Right now, everybody, you're listening to Tech This Out News. I got the big homie, 40 Glock, who is uh, very well known. A lot of the social media beefs have been well documented in his music. Uh, I know in 2011, 40, you got into a Twitter war words with the game. Uh, eventually, you and the game, you know what I'm saying, laid hands. And went at it, and uh, of course that was uh, broadcast via social media. Uh, Forty, you know, I went on and sued the game. I guess it relates to the incident. And since then, you know, I know you're no stranger to beef at all, as you and Whack 100 have been going at it as well on Twitter, YouTube, the Gram, uh, and so much more. Right, right. Okay. So, with that being said, uh, you know, saying tech this out is where tech, pop culture, and music live. Uh, so let's get it in. What's cracking with you, big homie? I mean, you know, it's the same old, same old, you know, uh, my life is pretty much public record. You know what I mean? It's and through, through a lot of internet stuff and you know what I mean? It's, it's like basically documented, you know what I mean? Through that social media network world. But, you know, it is what it is. You, you take the pros and the cons with it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, as far as controversy and beef, yeah, I'm no... I'm, I'm not a stranger to it. Uh, I mean, before social media exists, I mean that's that's life, like where I, how I grew up. You know what I mean? But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, glorifying it or nothing like that. But it's just what I've been through. You know what I mean? It's my life, and it it is what it is, and it's, it's happened. And uh, you know, we we grow, we mature. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, no, I get it. And, and, and I mean, not even to put it out there like that, 40, because I understand, you know, perspective. A lot of the stuff that seemed to be sensationalized, I mean, you never know until you have an opportunity to talk to the person. But I know it's a thin line between the online world and the streets. Um, and when was that line crossed with, I say, mean, you and that line, it was, I, 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 I never knew what. He was like a person. And I understand it, but see what the... The people don't understand it, but I understand it from a perspective of when you reach a, spur, a certain plateau in in, in 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 entertainment or whatever, people are gonna try to reach on and latch on to you to try to get a boost off you for their own hype. You know what I mean? And that's pretty much what Wack did. You know what I mean? He was he was I didn't know him like that. You know what I mean? He act like me and him got this this hell of a relationship, and we never really had a relationship. I mean, he was basically. He kept chiming in, poking his nose in me and gang business, and they act like he gang manager and this and that when he wasn't his manager. You know what I mean? And it's it's you know he 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 self titled himself that title. Or that's my manager. He, he start labeling himself, label himself everybody manager. You know what I mean? He's not Ray J manager. I didn't go through whack to do no deal with Ray J when I did my single with Ray J. But you know, um, like with social media has made him people this platform where they could just get around the artist and they could just yell stuff out and people would believe it. Man, that's messed up. You know up. what I mean? That's pretty much what he did. He started, like when I got jumped, he started, he was calling radio stations himself. They weren't reaching out to him. He was calling into them. <laughs> and I was watching this, wow. I'm watching this whole like cartoon effect to me in reality. And I was like, this is just unfolding, and he's making it real life, and they're really making it real life, and they built this whole thing off of jumping me with bodyguards and security guards, and they took it from the streets and brought it onto online and, and, and fabricated it all, you know what I mean? So have you come across uh, whack or, or game? Like, do you all, I know you all from L.A., and L.A. is is big, but it's not big. It's big, but it's not big, but it's also... You know, when you when you when you trying to avoid somebody, you know how to avoid them. You know what I'm saying? So they know how to avoid them. You know, they not gonna go nowhere with me. They not gonna go nowhere where forty gonna be without no police. Oh. I tell you that much. You know what I mean? But other than that, is that what you was? Uh, I saw you online with the with the bean. <laughs> I mean, you know, I need on there. Even like with that, I was uh, that was a that was a parody that I did. You know what I mean? And, and see, with online, we could put the, that's the thing about online that I say. I like I put that out years ago. But online, I was I was just playing around. I was like, yeah, this gets good laughs. You know what I mean? And we put it up. So for people that don't know, Ford, I want to be clear. You were in the desert in Vegas, or or yeah, I, I was in Vegas. All right, and you had you had you had that red dot. Right. <laughs> on, 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 on the what was it? Glock? Was you on the Glock or what was it? Yeah, that was a, that was a, uh, that was a Glock. You know what I mean? It was a forty. Okay, you you were namesaking. I got you. Right. 
You know what I mean? So we was we did that as a parody. We was, we was just clowning, and you know we set a we set, we put a target on the ground in the dirt. It was sitting in the dirt. So we when we were shooting at it, you know 